So we found the construction plans inside uh, the house. Let's go to the city hall and see if we can find uh, any information about it. Um, not the Chronicle, not the police station. Whereabouts are we going? I think over... Yeah, that's the city hall there. So we'll fast travel over here. See if we can get some information. Uh, Gildan did have a business partner that he scratched off. A contest for the guests of Cordona. Find hidden treasure. Okay, I'm not too worried about the, uh, the hidden treasure. Does she have anything else to say? Have you found anything helpful? No. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, oh, here's the archive here. Okay, so the subject will be a business period. Registry is uh, legal documents, districts. I think it's the old city. Let's check that out. Registration of Gildan and Swift. Notice of registration by authority of the government of Cordona. This deed registers the creation of Gildan and Swift Limited on this 21st day of June, 1877. Theodore Gildan is the sole proprietor and founder of the above end enterprise and shall provide finances and the land known as the Roman outskirts. Arthur Swift is a founding partner and shall provide finances and his services as an archaeologist. The primary purpose of the enterprise is to perform archaeological research in the ruins located at the intersection of Bazaar Road and Arnott Street. Okay. Beyond the fortification walls in Old City, Cordona. The sole proprietor I decide hereby agrees to fund archaeological research in exchange for ownership of any uncovered items of historical value. The founding partner undersigned hereby waives all finders' rights and ownership of items uncovered in the archaeological dig in exchange for the exclusive right to publication of all academic findings thereof. Signed, Mr. Theodore Gildan and Mr. Arthur Swift. With your love for archives, you would have made the perfect bureaucrat. Right, so we know where it is. Barnet and uh, is it Arnold Street? Uh, let's check out the map. Just have a look at the casebook for this. Registration. Okay, so the map is Old City. Um, okay, that's Arnott Street there. And oh, Bazaar Road. Okay, so the closest uh, warp point is just here on Scarlet Street. We'll follow that along to the east. That should take us to where we need to go. Mm -hmm. From day to night, Aiden stands there, recruiting non-rebellious workers for the dig. Recruiting workers for the dig. Learn how to find the recruiter. Okay. Put in your shirt. Deep digging. Pro British, yes. Change jobs, no. Owes me money, no. Next car, yes. Very tired, no. Old city marketplace, yes. Okay. That makes sense. I've overheard that in order to enter the dig site, I need to be employed. A man named Aiden recruits new workers in the old city marketplace in the west end of the district. He's a scar on his neck and only looks for working types with appropriate British attitude. Uh, now there was a shop just back here, wasn't there? Let me have a quick look. Clothing trader. Is there a clothing trader around here? Just a bit further down. Don't Aha. miss out on my unique clothes. Let's pick something that suits you. Okay, we'll take a look, see if there's something that we can um, pretend we're a worker. Now this, this one might do. I think these are the working um, people down here. What's this? Vagabond rags. 
Uh, that could definitely work out. Oh, this one. Ukrainian outfit. Yeah, let's buy this. What goes with the uh, Ukrainian outfit? Um, sure. Okay. A good choice. So a let's good choice. Good choice indeed. Okay, so we're going to pin this entrance to the dig site, go to the wardrobe. Uh, we've just purchased that, so we will wear that. What else do we have? Merchant attire. Worker's apron looks fine as well. Uh, take off the uh, detective hat. Uh, there we go. Indeed. Sure. Right, we are in disguise. And uh, we need to go to uh, the marketplace. In the west end of the district. I guess it's that old city market there. Uh, what's the closest... Okay, we don't really have a... a Close fast travel point there. So we just have to head out here to the west and then the south. See if we can find this uh, this man who is pro British, has a neck scar, and uh, see if we can get into the dig site. like it's just this way. The Market Square, beating heart of the old city. Uh, I wonder if they still sell that Turkish delight around the corner. Turkish delight? I could, uh, I could go with some Turkish delight. Probably some traders around. This guy's looking suspicious. See what traders we have here. Furniture Don't trader. Don't miss out on the best carpets on the island. Nice affordable clothes. Step right up. Another clothing trader there. The furniture trader has some of um, Sherlock's items. Come, come. Decorate your house in Oriental style. No, it's uh, this. Marhaba, it's a good day for a purchase. Okay, I wonder if this stuff belongs to homes. Um, pirate pistol. May your purchase bring you joy. Uh, see if Come, don't miss out on my unique clothes. Style. See if that can't, uh, turns up back at the house. Who knows? All right, this guy's standing here looking suspicious. Sir, kind sir, might I steal your attention? I am not buying. Ah, that is the thing. You won't waste a single mangir. I am a digger, you see, and I have heard of a dig site so deep it clogs your ears. I want to be there. Why are you telling me this? I have heard of a man recruiting for such a dig. A man with a scar, such as uh, the one that you're hiding. And your boots are dirty with the deep clay I am so familiar with. Oh, I, I hope it wasn't too rude of me to point that out. You have a good eye. And you just want to dig? Dig deep and that's it? What's the catch? Are you in desperate need of money? Oh, there is no catch, sir. I won't even ask for advance pay. Just give me a shovel and I'll dig a hole like you've never seen. Huh. Is that so? Well, I have to ask you an important question first. Would you be fine working for Brits? I am all for them. Well, you say that, but can you prove it? I'll sing you a very special song. God save our gracious queen. Cut it! 
or people here will make you their queen. I can also speak in limericks. Please don't. You might be a little bit weak in the head, but a natural bone digger with a keen eye is what we need. Take this permission slip and go to this address. The guard will let you in and check with the professor once you're there. Okay, good. We are in. So, over here. I remember the monument, Cordona's legendary pirate, the Robin Hood of the place. Do you recall it, John? I do. I wonder if... What is that? Hand me down. Karim of the Silver Hand, the pirate with a golden heart. I told you I remembered him. Hey, Sherlock, I'm up here. Guess what I've found? A riddle, and it's about a treasure. Listen to this. What? John, you've surpassed yourself. On the top of the monument was carved the first in the chain of riddles, which as John suggests lead to the silver hands of treasure. The first riddle, a hand with treasure, a quest so sweet, stand where Eurus Road and Crooked Street meet. A few steps toward the mosque, left at the first stairs, and find the courtyard a wishing well shares. Come on, Sherry, this is just like the old days. Sherlock and John on a pirate's treasure adventure. Okay, so I'm not too sure where that is. Um, I guess I can take a look for that later. For now, let's just stick to the main case. Uh, a gilded cage. Uh, Aiden gave me permission to enter, which should get me past the guard. Hand me down, silver hand riddles, silver hand monument. Uh, there's a couple of these stories here. Uh, there's the treasure island. There's for the birds. Uh, the, the bird has gone missing. The tail of the empty house. Uh, which we're still doing, still looking for the uh, the items to fill up our house again. But for now, let's stick to the main story. And uh, see if we can get into this dig site. Mm -hmm. Stop loitering and get inside. Yes, sir. Right. So let's go and speak to the boss. Newcomer, talk to the professor first. He's the old fellow with the glasses and the plans. Where's the fire in your eyes? Where's the smile? I am sick and tired of seeing apathy among the new workers. Sir, believe me, I do have the spark. I want to start work straight away. It's as important to me as it is to you. Ah, that's the spirit. I'm on the verge of a great discovery. I am ready to work. Splendid. Do you know what I am working on? Archaeological treasure. Ah, uh, you're hoping to find something priceless, something that will change our history. Bravo, young man. I couldn't have said it better myself. It's true. We're looking for Vitus Lemonius's tomb. I'll help you. That is my goal as a worker. Good. Listen to me carefully, then. I hate repeating myself. I am Professor Swift. We have three rules here. Don't touch anything, always return the tools, and don't distract me unless you find something. Sounds simple enough. Are you the only one in charge here, Mr. Sweet? Yes, I am the only one and no one else. You hear anything other than that, it's a lie. People of your kind can have difficulty understanding who's in charge. Take a minute, memorize my face, and then get to work. Oh, I will definitely take a closer look to memorize my superior. Okay, broken glasses. Unmarried, okay. Bruise on the elbow, just like Paul had a bruise on the elbow.
indifferent or poor. Uh, thick notebook, meticulous. Okay, he's not a money grubber, I don't think. A knowledge seeker, sounds more like. Arthur Swift is an archaeologist attempting to find the tomb of Vitus Lemonius on Cordona. He uses all his resources to locate this ancient site, driven by an obsession to expand the knowledge of humankind. He does not care about his appearance. No occasional wounds incurred during research, such as the injured elbow on his left arm. His life is documented in meticulous detail in a diary he treasures. Arthur Swift has sacrificed almost everything he has in a thankless attempt to uncover more about the past. I wish I could be as passionate about something as you are, Mr. Swift. You value knowledge and dedication over everything else. It's a long road, young man. A sharp eye and attention to detail are the only stepping stones along this path. You have to sacrifice everything you love for the larger prize. Exactly. So much in life is uh, superficial. I wish more people would understand. I never heard a truer word, lad. Folk will ignore what truly matters in life, and for what? Convenience. Bold words indeed. I doubt that many scientists would be willing to support their bragging with fieldwork. The academic world is full of restrictions. Our honorable professors are too afraid to dirty their hands. God forbid if they have a stain on their shirt. You can follow in my footsteps. You can start learning by returning to work. Show me what you can find. Okay, I found something here. I don't think he'll let us look at it, though. Don't touch anything here. Get back to work. This reminds me of my father's room. A plan for this whole operation. Titus Limonius's tomb has been found. Near the city of Corinth, British archaeologist Sir George Griffiths has discovered the well-preserved tomb of a Roman legate. Uh, Titus Limonius, owner of the legendary twin sword of Romulus gifted by Augustus himself, first emperor of the Roman Empire, in an exclusive interview, Sir George has described the find as a priceless addition to the history of humankind. The entrance was found by the removal of several blocks of soil around prominent statues revealing the tomb. According to Sir George, the statues represent the life of Titus, a female statue, presumably a mother holding a basket of fruits, looks to the west. Another female figure, perhaps Autumn with a sickle in her hand, looks to the east. Okay, so I think this will be important. Um, holding a basket, basket of fruit looks to the west. Autumn with a sickle looks to the east. Sir George presumes that these statues are hidden in the allegories of Zephyrus, a minor god of the west wind, and the other Eurus, god of the east wind. All this being played in a circle with the statues of the two brothers, Titus and Vitus. The achievements of the archaeologists have been acknowledged by the crown. This might prove useful. I'll note it down. Okay. Ah, let me warm my bones here. Titus and Vitus Limonius were legendary legates of the early Roman Empire, starting their military career to suppress the riots of the Bellovaci and Elebrogues. Uh, they were the key commanders during the Siege of Mutina and the Battle of Actium with the new Emperor Augustus. The brothers received twin swords, presumably the ones previously belonging to Romulus and Remus. The brothers served as legates to conquer the Dalmatian and African provinces and were famous for their worship of minor gods, Titus honored Eurus, while his brother prayed to Zephyrus. Not much is known about the brothers except for the descriptions by Pliny the Elder. Titus wore the skin of a lion with his head on the helmet a tradition he picked up while being a signifer. Uh, Vitus held a shield. Okay, so Titus has a line on his head. Vitus held a shield large enough to cover the sky. Though the exact locations of the tombs remain unknown, historians know that Titus died in the spring of 10 AD while Vitus in the autumn of 12 AD. Oil cloth. Won't fade and waterproof. Enough here to make 10 sails and more. Straw dolls. Eerie, but effective for a scene recreation. Oh, I want one of these. Or two.
Okay, we're going to continue down. Swift lost it. Which statue was damaged? Kick statue. Lion helmet. Uh. Workers of the dig site found a statue with a lion helmet head. It originally lay on the pedestal closest to the beach, but someone kicked it over the edge. As a result, the statue broke and the pedestal remains tilted. Okay, looking down here on the beach. Somehow the text remains legible. Let's see if I remember my Latin. An inscription near the four pedestals translates to Vitus rests nearby, beware the one who wishes to disrupt his sleep, for he is guarded by the gazes of his brother and the autumn wind. Right, let's take a look at this. A goddess? A mother? Someone's wife. Um, she's got the sickle, so I think that's the autumn. A sickle for harvesting. The autumn wind. The ancient Romans honoured the seasons. There were four statues here originally. I wonder what the three other statues look like. I see now. Mr. Swift didn't realise the significance of the statues. All right, so we do need to figure this out. Let's have a quick look at the case notes. Arthur Swift is an archaeologist. There are four statues. Okay, Zephyrus looking west with a basket of fruit. Uh, and then we've got Eurus with a sickle. Uh, looking east, the other brothers in between, Titus and Vitus. Titus with a lion helmet. Um, the lion helmet, Titus is closest to the beach. Uh, Vitus rests nearby, but we're the one who wishes to disrupt his sleep. For he is guarded by the gazes of his brother in the autumn wind. Okay. Okay, so the ocean is out to the east. Which is up that way. Um, closest to the beach was the lion. So Titus the Lion is here, and that's the statue that was knocked over. Um, so that's east, so looking west we have... Uh, the lady with the basket of fruit. So in between we have Titus and Vitus. This must be Vitus here. The sword and shield. No. Um, and then lastly, we have the autumn winds looking east with the sickle. That should do it. And they're all, all looking at each other. Okay. I think that's it.
It seems everything's in place. Now, let's see what this has to tell us. Okay, so one clue is that uh, Vitus rests nearby, beware the one who wishes to disrupt his sleep, for he is guarded by the gazes of his brother in Autumn Wind, which is Titus and... Wait, which one's Autumn Wind? Wasn't the... Uh... One of the sickle. She was facing that way, wasn't she? Um, I do need something here, apparently. Um, let me just make sure I've got the right thing pinned, investigating the ruins. Um, anyway, let's go and have a look at this site, see if we can see anything. Okay, something has appeared. to the beach. Now oh, we have a dig site here, I believe. Here is your discovery, Mr. Swift. Hey, look at this. What have you found? Don't let anyone touch anything there. Eureka! I found you, my friend. Working and living by the sea. What a dream. Now that Arthur is uh, being kept busy, let's go back up to his desk and see what else we can find. So he's got darts as well. A box of darts? Handy against rodents of all kinds. The zoological bestseller Tusk and Trunks provides the most rigorous scientific description of the elephant. It is, it, is, it is almost encyclopedic in its analysis of the creature's life, both in the wild and captivity. One crucial chapter describes the elephant's mating season in which they become extremely dangerous. Hmm. Furthermore, the book features guidance on how to communicate and interact with a big animal. Interesting. Diary. A personal diary owned by Arthur Swift. He describes in considerable detail his personal life and research. More importantly, it tells of a dispute between the, archaeolo the archaeologist and Theodore Gilden over the dig site. Day 1224, Theodore always uses his wealth to shut down complaints. I'd rather he bought a brand with more jarification so that he were smart enough to see the bigger picture. Not everything revolves around your darn elephant. I have only a few months before he will commence construction. He even lacks the imagination to build something beautiful. Ivory baths, the mundanity. I must think, lest our invaluable history be buried by the inconsequential. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Trying to take over my research, are you? I come here to pick up my diary, and I find you snooping around. Explain yourself. Mr. Swift, if that were true, I would have been on my way to the newspaper. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I didn't have a chance to introduce myself properly. Outrageous! You deceived me, sir! What is the reason for your being here? Who sent you, Mr. Holmes? Theodore Gildon's premature death brought me here. Theodore? Is dead? How can that be possible? I'm thinking of all the possibilities, and I'm not crossing out anyone who might have been involved. Even his elephant. The land you're excavating belongs to Mr. Gildon, does it not? Did I hear an accusation? I have nothing to hide. You can ask me whatever nonsense you've prepared as a token of my diminishing respect towards you. Very well, Mr. Swift. I appreciate your cooperation. When was the last time you saw Mr. Gildon? A couple of days ago. We discussed the site. I believe in the tomb and its secrets. 
Theodore's patience was stretched, however. He was already inventing new projects. It wasn't a long conversation. I suppose that his daughter will inherit everything now, along with all of the eccentricities and problems. And not forgetting Goliath. Eccentricities and problems, Mr. Holmes. One of many. Were you at the site this morning? Affirmative. This project is taking a lot of my time, as you see. I spend more time underground than on the surface. When did you learn about Theodore's death? Just now. You just told me. And you aren't surprised, shocked. I won't tell anyone if you shed a tear or two. Weren't you partners, after all? We were. And it is a real shame. But I've seen too many deaths in my life, Mr. Holmes, for the news to truly shake me. Will you allow me to return to my research, or are you insisting on remaining an obstacle? Oh, I haven't even started yet. Alright, let's see what he says. My goodness, there's a lot to ask about. Moving on. Um, I've nothing to add. Images I've testimony. Nothing to add. Construction of the baths. Did this plan cause a rift in your business relationship with Theodore Gilden? Nothing like that. Admittedly, we didn't share a common vision of what is more important, the past or the future. In my opinion, we can't build a future without knowing the past. So you wanted to save the tomb of Vitus here, or perhaps your control over the research? Only the knowledge that rightly belongs to humankind. Nothing less and nothing more. You have a weakness for nostalgia, or rather, do you use it to record a list of enemies? Young man, you need to check your moral compass. Reading another person's diary is a sin in every culture that I can think of. But you aren't answering the question. You've already read it. Why bother? I simply record my life to keep my memory clean from misinterpretation. Letters and pages don't lie. But the writer of the text can. With this book, you attempted to plan an attack on the Anthem? Your insinuations are out of place. Goliath is a frightening animal. All I wished to do was to understand the creature. As any scientist would do, I researched, analyzed, and drew conclusions. Hmm. And what conclusion did you draw? That Theodore Gilden made the animal miserable. He couldn't provide the proper environment for the beast. My interest in the subject ended there. What's with this box of darts? Is it for a scientific argument? A little darker than that. Rather for killing the kind of rodents that might nibble a nose or a toe in your sleep. Let's just say I have to protect myself against a larger animal, such as an elephant. Might it be enough to stop it, make it faint? If I were you, I wouldn't bank on it. I've nothing to add. Moving on. I'm a busy man. Entrance to the dig site. What's with this intricate recruitment process? Pro-British workers charge less? As a head of this organization, I need to secure a productive environment. It's impossible to do so if there are political differences. Especially here, where the native population doesn't support our efforts to find the ancient artifacts. Decent pay can also stimulate productivity and shut down any political discord. Hadn't you thought of that? You're young. You have time to fritter and fight with everyone you meet. I don't have such a luxury. Our workers receive enough pay for what they do. So don't start a discussion you know nothing about. Right. Uh, registration. Hack bags. All perks. Have you seen this person before? The one beside Imogen Gildan? No, but he's with Imogen, so I suppose that he's a friend of hers. That girl always has her head in the clouds. I could have said Theodore was different, but that wouldn't have been entirely true. Away with the fairies, was he? That's one way of putting it. Either way, I don't know much about Imogen's life or her friends. The type of elite that pretends to be educated. 
Gildan's elephant is quite an unusual addition to Cordona's fauna. What is your scientific opinion on that? No matter how much Theodore loved it, it still remained a wild animal trapped inside a stone pen. Goliath needs savannas, fields, lakes. I'm sure that Goliath did not have a plan to kill his owner to head to the savannas. What do you think? No. Animals don't kill in a typical sense. I can only presume that it tried to protect itself from captivity. From Theodore. It was a gilded cage that was predestined to break. I've nothing to add. Remember one of the rules? It uh, seems that you didn't return a tool. Is this knife yours? Do I look like a fellow who carries a knife? I don't need it. There are plenty of uses for it on the site, and outside of it. I have other people to cut ropes for me, Mr. Holmes. Hmm. I'm a busy man. Okay, the threat to Paul, he won't be interested in, I don't think. I've nothing to add. Moving on. Um, Moving on. Isn't... Your partner had a very specific attitude towards the things he treasured. Was this habitual for him? That would have been too much even for him. Don't get me wrong, he had a harsh temper. Like a true businessman, he was ready to burn his competitors to the ground. But threatening someone physically would have been something new even for him, am I correct? Absolutely. Besides, I had never seen him this angry. The fellow who received the letter must have been extremely alarmed. Okay, key evidence collected. I'll just check down here one more time. Because I think the uh, the book is here. It's the third in the trilogy. Sharpest pickaxe. <laughs> A guilty pleasure of the real archaeologist. Missing your Laura, Mr. Swift? Hey, a word about the trilogy. Right then, you literary expert. You, what was so important about these books? Or did you simply need some kindling? It's inspirational. I have a plan. Are you listening? I wish I wasn't, but I am. So, we catch a monkey, a langa, for example, then we extract some blood from it. What? Why? It will make us forever young, Sherry. Page 127 of the second book. Oh, I am so done with this. No, wait. Then how about we make a wax statue? I've stopped listening, John. Hmm? The Zookiology Trilogy. What do you have to say about that? As far as I can tell, you're a man of the academic world, so this book about Nabe and Laura is just an empirical study? What? That nonsense? I'd prefer to lose my eyesight than read such trash. So, you know nothing about it? I know nothing. I wish I'd never heard of it in the first place, this caricature of science. Do I hear traces of envy? You're still relatively young that you might find your own Laura. Perhaps I envy Nabe, for I cannot simply blow people up for distracting me. That's all. You happy now? Wonderful. All right, let's go to the Mind Palace, see if we can figure this out. Lots more clues here. He was partners. And Gillen lacked passion. Uh, his diary. We've read the uh, elephant book to understand the animal. Uh, the Darcy used to kill rodents. He sincerely believes the discoveries of the dig site will change humankind's understanding of their own history. Uh, he believes the elephant sought to free itself from captivity. Arthur said it's not his knife and he doesn't use it for work. Um, he was surprised to see Theodore so aggressive. Okay, um, if anyone was there, I, I'm leaning towards Paul. Uh, let's have a look at John's diary. We've got uh, okay, some things about the tomb, then the sharpest pickaxe. 
Whilst De Orem concludes the phenomenal trilogy of the successful adventures of the most crucial couple in the history of the archaeology, Nave and Laura. Nave and Laura's actions have caused the Earth to split in two. The hostile environment is now full of unknown creatures, flying apes, pre-turtles that carry the world, and flying dinosaurs. To prevent the end of the world, Nave and Laura have to combine their scientific knowledge and develop an ingenious solution. So Dread has yet to be killed, and it is only a matter of time before he returns in wrath with ancient knowledge of changing time. Will our characters survive in the past, present, and future? The chances are doubtful, but if you buy this book, the chances will increase. Okay, right, The Gilded Cage, uh, it was mating season, and um, like there was a fatal battering. No, it was mating season, and... Damage the shed and Arthur has fresh bruises. Arthur may have received his injury while falling on Gildan's shed, as possible. Arthur may have been at the crime scene when Theodore Gildan died. Paul may have been at the crime scene when Theodore Gildan died and fallen on the shed. I think that's more likely that it's Paul, seeing as Paul and Imogen were together. Um, Arthur and Gildan had already split up their partnership. And uh, Arthur's certainly more interested in the architecture. Fatal battering. Trying times. The partnership end ended. Uh, Arthur protected his research. Arthur Swift has dedicated his life to studying the history of humankind. He may not have been willing to see that end. Yeah, that's possible. With Arthur and Paul own dance. It was mating season, everyone blames Goliath. Goliath is dangerous right now, but may prove valuable to the case. I need to lure him out by exploiting his lust. Okay. Right. Hunting a Goliath. The elephant Goliath was present from Mr. Gilden's death and may have answers to how it happened. He is presently in heat, which I can take advantage of to lure him out. I have an idea of how to do just that, but I will need several items. Steady grey fabric that can hold gas, an instrument to mimic an elephant's trumpeting call, a strong scent to attract the animal. Okay, there's fabric at the dig site, the fog horn at the boat workshop, and perfume at the office if I can extract the pheromones. Let's do that right now. Um, chemical analysis. Okay, so we've got an extra operation here which um, reverses the polarity. Uh, we need three and four. There's three, there's four. Okay, easy, easy, easy. Let's do this. Um, that, that, that. Okay. Too easy. I've extracted pheromones from the liquid. Hunting the Goliath. Uh, we should have the canvas right here. This fabric will work. Okay. And I think we need to get out of here before we can fast travel. Here uh, to the boat shed, we can grab the fog horn. I don't think there's anything else I want to ask Paul about at the moment. I do want to have a look and see if there's anything else for sale that I might find at the house in any of these shops. Uh, doesn't look like it. So back to the storage, we'll grab the foghorn and then uh, I think we're ready to ready to go. It might fall an elephant. 
Mrs. Nini seemed to know her sewing inside out. Oh, oh we're going back to us. I hope Miss Nini won't misunderstand me. We're going back to Mrs. Nini's. I think, she, I think we went there early on in the game. She's by the city hall, I think. Or is it the police station? No, she's by the police station. We're exactly by the police station. Um, Knights Road and Trinity Way. Okay, right there. He's even putting up posters, poor man. Lose Is that Mrs. Nini there? Good day, madam. I've come to you with a special requirement. The tailors on the street can't help me, I'm afraid. Could you make a doll for me? Oh, Senior Holmes. You taught the police how to do their job, and they found the thief. Of course I will help you. But what sort of doll? A child's doll, such as my great niece might play with? Um, a little larger than your typical doll. Signore, I don't understand. Boy, girl, animal, and what color? Animal, um, a passionate, perhaps amorous animal. Ah, oh, Signore, you talk in riddles. I am an old lady who's seen it all. Tell me what you need. I need a life-size elephant. I think Mrs. Nini outdid herself with this one. Is that a tail? That's a trunk, John, but I must agree with you that it's her masterpiece. Well, let's not waste any time. Hmm. Okay. So we need to go back to the house to inflate that. And let's see if we can find Goliath. There might be more clues on the elephant. can somehow draw it out. The game is on. So, what's the plan? I hope it all doesn't go horribly wrong. We know that the elephant is seeking a female. We can arrange that. A doll with the appropriate scent might do miracles. So you're a marriage broker? Well, I suppose that makes me a groomsman. Oh, she is a bit breezy, I must say. Well, Goliath is eager for a single female elephant in his area. It should be just enough for his taste. You'll need to trust me. Are we ready? I can't stand the tension. We're ready. Let's call the elephant. Okay. <laughs> uh, teasing trumpet. How could anyone resist? I knew a lady once who said just that. Too bad I'm not an elephant. <laughs> Take your time, Sherry. <laughs> All right, let's, let's be impatient. That deserves a slap and then a kiss. And here's our lovesick friend. What is the meaning of this? 
Why are you bringing it here? I won't allow you to leave it. I assure you that it is only a temporary measure. It won't be long until the elephant is gone, I promise you. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, there's a wound. There's a dart. There's something in the needle. A feathered fletching. This might be promising. Okay, so it's the same same dart. It injured itself while running through the forest. Okay. Peaceful and compliant, almost a gentleman. Hmm. The left tusk is larger and more worn. You're a left tusk elephant. left tusk is uh, larger and more worn. Right, let's take a look at the clues. There's a faint trace of an unknown substance. Okay, it's getting more complicated now. So this is a uh, plus one. So four, three, four. I guess if I do that, I'll turn it to four. Okay, that's it. There were traces of strychnine inside of it. This amount could kill a human, but was not was not enough to topple such a large animal. Instead, it most likely aggravated the elephant, causing it causing a fit of rage and burst of strength. Okay, both Arthur and Paul own darts. Um, both Arthur Swift and Paul Perks had the means to shoot the elephant with a dart. They did. Third party used Goliath. An unknown third party, third party deliberately shot a poison dart at Goliath to provoke it into attacking Theodore Gildan. I can imagine the um, archaeologist may have known that through his reading, but probably not Paul. Third party protected Theodore. An unknown third party tried to protect Theodore Gildan by shooting a poison dart at the elephant. It's, uh, this one's a difficult one because both have poison darts, both have injuries on their elbows. Um, both claim the knife isn't theirs. I would imagine the knife, if it belongs to someone, is probably uh, Paul's. Paul was uh, given the threat, um, the threatening letter and beaten up by some thugs hired by Gildan. So, if anyone wants revenge or wants uh, Gildan out of the way, it would probably be Paul. Um, on the other hand, there isn't enough evidence, really. We can go back and question Paul and see if um, see what she says about the dart. Goliath is a wild animal. His captors are the ones responsible for his behavior. Uh, the elephant requires a new owner and a new home. Um, I'm leaning towards that because the uh, the elephant had been poked with a stick when uh, Gildan died. He dropped the, dropped the stick here, so he's obviously poking the elephant. The elephant picked him up, grabbed him, dropped him over there. Um, at some stage, the elephant was shot either before or after with the dart. I'm not sure which. Um, in any case, it probably doesn't matter that much. Not, neither of those two, it seems, have uh, intentionally killed uh, Gildan, as far as I can tell. Let's go back and ask about the dart, because the dart was actually used.
Just be quick. Dart found in the elephant. Do you want to mention anything about that, Paul? Just be quick. No. Um, I guess the only other person we can talk to is uh, if it's not the archae oh if it's not the archaeologist is Imogen. Um, let's talk to the archaeologist first. Uh, the game is telling us that we can talk to someone about the the dart. Stop loitering and... Okay, quickly run down here. I don't think it's the archaeologist, but let's see what he says. Be swift. Uh, okay. Who do we talk to about this dart? I'll go back to talk to Imogen one last time. that evidence, but normally you don't need to pin the evidence when you're talking to suspects. You just show them the evidence. Imogen? I have to leave you for now. Okay, oh, that's what we need to do. We can't ask them any more questions because we're... Um, we need to find the suspect. Goliath may have been provoked. This doesn't lead to anything though. Third party used Goliath, either Paul or... Um, Arthur Swift. But we can't pin that on anyone because we don't know. If someone tried to protect uh, Theodore, they would have probably would have said so. Unless they didn't want to be um, want it known that they were there. Now, uh, yeah, but someone definitely shot the, uh, the Goliath. We don't know if it was before or after. Uh, we do know that um, Goliath was not happy there. May have just got angry all by himself. He was uh, in mating season. So that definitely has something to do with it. We can't uh, blame either Paul or uh, Arthur. So we're going to go with Goliath kill Theodore. We're not going to execute him because it's a wild animal. We're going to uh, find a proper home for uh, find a proper home for Goliath. Goliath is a wild animal. His captors are the ones responsible for his responsible for his behavior. The elephant requires a new owner and home. I should discuss with Imogen any possible options to save and relocate the elephant. Oh, we're gonna go with that. I have to leave you for now. Oops. You were right about Goliath. Everyone confirmed your opinion. They all agree that the beast is vicious. The animal wielded two tons of rage, and Mr. Gildan regrettably didn't stand a chance. The mating season only served to amplify its temper. Oh, spare me. That's a little too much detail, thank you. What is the point of this conclusion? How do you plan to use your findings? Oh, I'm not sure I like this conclusion. I, I do. I'm leaning now towards Paul, um, because he was threatened by uh, by Gildan. Um, anyway, it's too late. Too late now. Let's see what happens here. Miss Gildan, I know how much you dislike the elephant. Rather more than dislike. 
I wish I could have done more to that wretch than just speak of it. But it's innocent. Goliath did not intend to kill your father. It was provoked, scared, and in mating season. Your father took Goliath's normal state for granted, and in doing so made a mistake that caused the elephant to be aggressive. Stop it! I already know the answer. I don't need your moral perspective on this situation. I don't know why you wasted your time. I actually did more than you. Which involved what, Miss Gildon? A man with a big wallet made an offer to take the elephant away. I accepted it. I was so naive thinking that it was me who was so helpless. But you are useless too. I am glad that the elephant is no longer of your concern, but I need to make sure. I don't care and I don't want to listen. Thought you wouldn't turn up. Why is that? I suppose it's the English way to leave without saying goodbye, but I never planned to abandon you. Because you brought the filthy beast here. Because you did nothing to ensure its proper punishment. I had to do everything, not you. I was piecing together your father's murder. There was nothing to piece together. I told you, it was Goliath. I never asked you to talk with anyone. I asked you to find the stupid animal. Even if my efforts are invisible, that does not mean that I did nothing. I don't have the strength to argue. These are my father's belongings. They're about your mother. Take them all and leave me be. I won't waste your time any longer, Miss Gildon. Thank you for your help. I guess from her perspective, we actually did do nothing. Because <laughs> we didn't find um, any conclusive proof that uh, Theodore was murdered. Anyway, there's a few items left here for us. Let's take a quick look. My dear Theodore, you know I value our friendship more than most other bonds. We share the same restless soul and your acceptance and support in trying times has been a blessing. I'm endlessly grateful for the turn of fate that saw Sita and I join the same expedition as you. It changed my life for the better. Nevertheless, I'm not blind nor a hypocrite. I know that your feelings towards me have deepened. Forgive me, Theodore, but I do not feel as you do. I must spare you the pain of one-sided love before it is too late. Please see enclosed the necklace you so thoughtfully gifted in remembrance of our adventure together. I cannot in good conscience continue to wear it. I know this letter will cause you such hurt, and for that I can but apologize deeply. Yet my heart is with Sija, who is still unaware of your desires. If this sees the end of our friendship, I will understand. But I truly hope we can continue to share the conversations, collaborations, and kindness, kindnesses that have brought me such joy all these years. Yours respectfully, Violet. And, okay, a letter from Violet. My mother always wore this around her neck until one day it disappeared. I was wondering where it went. She said it was a birthday present from a good friend. I just had another glimpse of a memory, John. It's fuzzy, but I'm sure it happens somewhere in the manor. Finally moving forward. Shall we go? Okay, so another memory. Hopefully we can figure out what that's all about, and we're back onto the main story, um, and Mother's Love. Um, yeah, I did actually go through a gilded cage and accuse both Paul and uh, the archaeologist. Both of them claim they're innocent uh, right up until the end, so uh, yeah, there's no, no firm conclusion to who actually uh, shot the dart, we just don't know. Um, which is why I don't feel like we can uh, accuse anybody um, for that case. But anyway, we're going to move on to the next one. Mother's Love. We do have a letter from Violet to Theodore. And in case, we're going to pin here the fragmented memory and we'll go through that next time.